G'day, g'day. This is your boy Ubermensch, and welcome back to another training compilation. Um, the first in a while. I think the last one I did was the powerlifting training one, um, where I basically just trained uh, for a novice powerlifting comp um, that happened in, I think it was January or February? Start this year? Oh, I think it was Feb. Yeah. Um, so after I finished that comp and that type of training, uh, I went straight to doing a weightlifting program, uh, weightlifting training, completely and utterly weightlifting specific. But anyway, let me uh, provide some context for the video. So it's been a pretty full on year, um, to say the least. Um, myself, my fiance and my stepchildren, um, we've gone through some pretty big changes um, not so much just with the whole COVID-19 lockdown thing, but also because we actually moved states uh, when it was happening. <laughs> um, myself and my fiance, we both work for essential services. So we were able to pass the border uh, between New South Wales and Queensland um, in Australia. So we were originally living in New South Wales and now we're living in Queensland. So moving to a new state um, with pretty much new jobs, meeting new people, or well, not so much meeting new people because of the lockdowns, but just a complete and utter um, different and alien environment to us. Um, yeah, it, it, it's been a bit of a struggle. Um, and we're still lucky compared to what has happened to most people. Um, but all the same, we've had to adapt. And the same thing with myself, with my training, uh, with the closure of gyms, I've had to adapt my training as well. Um, and it's been somewhat of a trial by fire for me and my training disciplines. So a lot of the footage that you're seeing at the moment um, is from pre-COVID. <laughs> um, so for my birthday, my fiance purchased me um, Clarence Kennedy's online coaching program for four weeks. And it is absolutely fucking awesome. Um, it is difficult, but it is very effective. And for some people, especially with myself, it's been a struggle to uh, adapt to the volume of the program. But one must understand that the volume is there for a reason. Um, it's not just there for the sake of, you know, like working hard. The physiological and neurological adaptions that is required in weightlifting, I think is vastly misunderstood. This is a sport that you can't just be like a weekend warrior and practice the Olympic lifts um, three times a week. Uh, you need to do like four is the minimum. You want to be doing about five times a week and that's no joke. And I don't mean like heavy every single session, but you definitely need to put in the work, put in the volume. And every time you lift that bar, and do the lifts, do the sets, do the reps. You're, it's all practice. Um, one of the things Clarence Kennedy says is that weightlifting is a skill, and like any skill, uh, you need to practice that quite often. Um, what is it like? I think it's like a certain number. It's like a thousand something. No, more than that actually. There's a there's a set number that people say that you need to practice anything to become a master at. And it's a staggering number. So apply that to weightlifting and you're in for a, a big job. You, you have to be prepared for that. So yeah, so um, before the lockdowns hit, before the gyms closed, when myself and my family were still in New South Wales, um, I was doing this type of training. Um, 
and I could see improvements happening already um, because basically I was uh, training four to five times a week and sending some of these videos to Clarence himself and he's a very good coach he's been doing it um, for quite a long time and he can spot uh, you know any errors that may be in your technique and I had plenty of errors <laughs> uh, that I was working at to uh, fix and that just comes with basically just conscious effort um, but also exercise selection Strong, keep going. And yeah, then the um, then everything went to shit, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't all bad. I mean, you know, some people had nothing at all. Um, so this this is when. It was like a couple of days before the move um, that me and my family made um, to cross the border. Um, we had to stay at um, my mother-in-law and father-in-law's residence uh, that was that's in New South Wales, uh, mid North Coast. And this little apparatus here uh, is basically just like a steel bar with cinder blocks on the end of it um, that basically my father-in-law made for us to keep up training and that is my step yep. that's my stepson Tyrese there yep. going Good. fucking go. hard as per usual Good. Yep. 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 Go. Go, um, go, 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 go. and yep. I couldn't be Come more on. than grateful um, keep going don't worry about that push come on come on could have been there um, doing nothing but playing Call of Duty, <laughs> but uh, Michael um, helped me out and created a bar for me to, you know, just keep up at least just my clean and jerk. What else do you do, babe, when the gyms are shut? It's honestly like. Um Probably the best thing. First thing to go is technique. You can practice your technique with it. So, for reasons I won't discuss, I wasn't able to get the full training setup I wanted. At least not at first. Um, and this bewildered me and kind of upset me. Um, I was only able to get four 25 kilo plates and eight 1.25 kilo plates, but they were only steel. I tried to get bumpers um, and that didn't work out. Um, at the time, I was like really upset about this because I couldn't train to my full capacity. Um, I could only really do some strength exercises um, and it, a lot of it just didn't really feel right. Um, so, most of my workouts were just kind of like squatting, deadlifting, uh, pulls. Um, I do like uh, some shoulder, uh, you know, overhead press and stuff just for the shoulders. Um, yeah, I couldn't do what I was doing in the gym before because I didn't have the equipment. Though I shouldn't have been ungrateful because a lot of people didn't even have what I had. Um, at least I still had weights, I had an Olympic barbell, and I had a squat rack. Um, and yeah, I, I really should have realized what I actually had. Um, and the way that I acted during this time was less than desirable.
So I had to sort of like maybe find a way to deal with this mentally. And I'm just about to show you a quote from one of my good friends from back home. Um, I was telling him about my limited amount of equipment and he sent through this and I was like, you know what, he's right, like he is 200% right. Um, the way that I'm acting right now, my mindset, my attitude towards all of this is not the type of thing I want to reflect in my personality. Um, so I tried to think outside the box a little bit and tried to see all of this as a blessing rather than a curse because the gym and training isn't everything. I mean, you know, if you're a Chinese weightlifter <laughs> and you're basically born into it, maybe it is. But for me, it wasn't. And there are other things in my life that I needed to appreciate apart from just going into the gym and training. I started doing other stuff like um, hiking. Um, there were plenty of hiking trails around where we lived in this new place of ours. So, you know, I tried to enjoy not just the kind of like, I don't know, for the, for the lack of a better term, selfish pursuits and just try to enjoy what was around me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is just one of the best games I've played on Call of Duty. I thought I should just add this. Um, and we got a new kitten, um, as you'll see here, newest addition to the family. Uh, his name is Gizmo and he is the cutest thing ever. So, yeah, I spent a lot of time um, with my family um, at home or outside when we were allowed to, of course, with the lockdowns and whatnot. Um, just having fun, just being in each other's company. I still kept on training, um, just what I could do, though. Eventually things got a lot better. The lockdowns lifted, the gyms reopened, and we could have a little bit more freedom. When the gyms reopened, you could only go for one hour sessions, but still this was better than nothing. And I quickly realized that my strength and my proficiency in the lifts was still pretty damn good. I didn't lose much. Another thing to add is that I had this newfound energy to get back to what I was doing. And then the gyms went a full 24 hour again. And I could go at any time and train for as long as I want. Now I had the chance to redo Clarence Kennedy's program. And that's exactly what I set out to do. And I noticed that I could kind of like increased the weights a little bit more. Um, I still had a lot of the strength and skill uh, from all those months ago. So I could actually do a little bit heavier and a little bit more this time around.
So over time, um, I was able to procure the funds uh, to purchase more bumper plates. Um, and this weightlifting platform here, uh, me and Nikita built together. And it was quite easy to put together. Um, we just had to like buy some wood, some liquid nails, um, just a cheap drill and some gym matting from uh, Bunnings Warehouse. Um, and the bumper plates, I think I got like, mm, I think it was like 120 kilos worth, but there was still some that I ordered via um, zip pay uh, over the internet uh, that I was waiting for. So at the time of this recording, I'm still waiting for more to arrive and eventually I'll have enough um, to total over 300 kilos, which is really, really good. Not that I'll be uh, deadlifting 300 kilos anytime soon. It's just good to have that amount. And the platform is really damn good. Um, it's not perfect as of yet. I still need a little bit more uh, gym matting, but it'll do for now. In time, I'll start training at home indefinitely. I find there's a certain pride with creating and owning the space, your own space, at home, um, that is kind of like unique. Um, it's different than just training in a gym. And I could probably save a lot of money um, from canceling my gym membership and just training exclusively at my own residence. I'm surrounded by a loving family that um, supports me in everything that I do, especially in weightlifting. So having that, just that environment and that support is a definite bonus. There's a quote that says that weightlifting is an island. You're basically a man on an island. It's a very, very solitary um, pursuit, but it doesn't mean that you have to be alone in it. Some of these lifts that I eventually performed um, are definite improvements. Here we have 100 kilos for a double, and I've never hit it this well. Um, if at all. Come on, babe, last one. Bring I think up. I've attempted this before and failed miserably. And coming up will be uh, an 110 kilo uh, clean and jerk attempt. I've definitely cleaned 110, but I've never been able to jerk it. Um, but if you look at the attempt, the jerk was so damn close. It was a bee's dick off. You were so close. An exercise like this, I just decided to add into the program because um, I'm finding my grip strength with snatch is lacking. So I did these uh, snatch grip deadlifts without straps and without a hook. Power snatch PR there. <clears throat> and we have a snatch PR here. So all in all, the point of this video has been to show that despite recent circumstances, um, you still need to see the value in your life even though your current circumstances can limit you inhibit you from fully pursuing what you want to do there's always um, value in life no matter if you can pursue something to the best of your ability and if you realize that then maybe you can find some inner peace that doesn't mean you should give up though Still keep trying, keep pushing. And in some ways you will need to kind of like think outside of the box. You'll need to find another way around the storm. And that is a gift. It is not a curse. Anything that tests you like that is not meant to bury you. It's meant to lift you out of the ground. And I wanna end this video with this quote by Marcus Aurelius.